my Linux distribution of choice is Void Linux. And today I'm going to be showing you how to install it on your personal computer or machine or whatever. Uh, I use Void Linux for a few different reasons. In fact, if you look at the screen right now, you can actually see uh, some of the big selling points of Void. And the reasons I use it is because it's a stable rolling release distribution. It's kind of like Arch, but it's a I've noticed it's a lot more stable, um, just overall, and it also has the run it edit system, which, <laughs> if, you, if you know me, I do not like system D, and so run it is just, it's better in system D in a lot of ways. In my opinion, system D is, I have nothing against it, like, that much, but it's just slow and bloated. I don't like it that much. It's just run it's a lot faster and easier to manage for me. Um, but it also has the XBPS package manager as well, which is slowly becoming my favorite package manager. It's, I think right now it's really neck and neck with Pac-Man, but I think, I think it's slowly going to become my favorite package manager just because of how simple and just easy to use it is. It's great. Uh, the only caveat is it's a mouthful to pronounce. XBPS, so yeah. Of course, there's also other reasons too. Uh, it's an independent distribution. It's not fort from anything at all. It also has different C libraries as well. You can choose from Muscle or the usual GNU libc. I usually stick with GNU libc because that's just what I use. Um, there's also XBPS SRC, which I don't use that often, but it's basically like the Arch user repository except it's a lot more open because you can accept almost any package from anywhere. It's, you can use it to compile software. Um, it's pretty useful. I don't use it often, but I know other people that do. So I'm going to show you how to install Void Linux. So you go to downloads and they only have really two big platforms supported. They have 32 bit and 64 bit x86, which is normal and also ARM platforms. So, if you have any system besides these two, which I really doubt, you, you're out of luck, I guess. But it also supports Raspberry Pi and a few other custom boards, too. But yeah, you can go ahead and choose to install the live image. You can also choose between GLMC and Muscle, like earlier. And if you're not a big fan of the terminal, you can actually install an XFCE version, with a, which is a very lightweight um, desktop environment. But I'm going to show you how to install the default uh, distribution. So I already actually have it installed, so, or downloaded. So I already have the live image downloaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out and pull up VirtualBox. And I'm gonna create a new system, call it Void Linux. And let's go other, try virtual. I'm doing a custom I'm putting in a custom folder, but we're going to choose Linux and other Linux 64 bit. And I'm going to give it 8 gigs of RAM just because I have 16 gigs and might as well give it some extra RAM. You probably won't need more than like, you probably won't need for more than 2 gigs for this because it's a very minimal system, but I'm going with 8 because why not? And create a hard disk. And I'm going to be generous and give it 20 gigs, which is a lot for a system this minimal. But as you can see, I have two terabytes, so I have space to waste. So let's go ahead and create that. And I'm going to go ahead and mount the live image. So go ahead and select Void Live. Choose. And if you're doing this on actual hardware, you can just flash this to a USB drive and just plug it into your computer and boot from the USB drive. If you don't know how to do that, then chances are you probably shouldn't be installing in a, a different operating system on your computer, at least not one like Void Linux. So don't do that if you don't know what you're doing. But I'm gonna go ahead and change a few settings too, give it more video RAM, and I'm gonna give it two cores to use, just, just so it's a bit faster. And let's go ahead and start the machine. I'm going to go ahead and put this here. Okay. And boot into Void Linux. It's going to take a second. 
Gotta give it one moment. Oh, yeah. There. Ah. Yeah. One thing I don't like, don't like about VirtualBox is those pop-ups, but oh well. And as you can see, it successfully booted up. And there's a little message that says, Welcome to Void Linux. Two users are available to log in, root and anon. And if you want to install the system, just log in as root. So root and password is void Linux. Uh, give me a little moment. There we go. And we have the shell prompt right here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue. It says to start the installation, please type void installer. So I'll type in void installer. And as you can see, it gives us a little message saying, oh, thank you for installing Void, stuff like yada, 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 stuff like that. Uh, continue. Let's go ahead and set the keyboard. I'm using a standard US keyboard, so I'm going to go ahead and select US. Set the network. If you're using wired, all you have to do is set up DHCP, but if you're using wireless, then it'll actually ask you for your uh, SSID and password. You just fill that in and it'll connect you. Uh, select the source of the installation. We're doing local because we're installing this from a quote unquote USB drive. Uh, host name. I'm going to get this system the host name uh, void box. You can give it whatever, but this is just my preference. Uh, set system locale. Uh, if you live in the US, uh, you can choose enus.utf8. If you don't live in the US, then you probably know what to choose, but here we go. And set the system time zone. I live in America. And I live, er, I'm in the Chicago time zone, so I'm going to choose Chicago. And select a root password. I'm going to choose the most convoluted password out there. Password. Type in again. There we go. And now we're going to make a user account. So my user login name would be Bryce. And my username is going to be Bryce. And the password is going to be password. And you can add yourself to some groups if you want. I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, but yeah, you can add yourself to any groups that you want. And next we're going to select a bootloader. And we're going to install it onto our disk, which in this case is slash dev slash SDA. And if you're using a different type of drive, like an NVMe drive, it'll say slash dev slash NVMe, but I'm going to choose this one since it's the only one that's shown up. Uh, use a graphical terminal, yes. And let's partition the disks. There we go. And I'm going to use CF this because it's easier for you to see what's going on. And this warning message is going to pop up. If you haven't actually installed a operating system on your computer before, you probably will be very lost. Um, unless, unless you're using like a legacy BIOS system or as some people call it, master boot record MBR. But if you're using a EFI or EFI system, it's a bit more complicated, but I'm going to be using a master boot record partition, which is very simple and very straightforward. So I'm going to choose DOS, which is MBR master boot record. And I'm going to create one big partition that's 20.9 gigs. And I'm going to toggle the bootable flag to make it boot because if you can't boot your system, why? <laughs> but I'm then going to go ahead and write the changes to the disk. So I'll go ahead and do that. Are you sure what to write? Yes. There we go. And as you can see, it says the partition table has been altered. So I'm gonna go ahead and quit. And next we go ahead and configure the file systems. So go ahead and select slash dev slash sd1. And you can actually choose which file system you want. Really, you can go with really anything. 
uh, but I go with the default Linux file system, which is ext4. Uh, but for use case, your use case, it might be different. But for I think for most people, it's probably ext4. But there's different uses for different file systems. But I go with the default. Yeah, I give it a moment and please specify the mount point. We're just going to do slash for root partition. And do you want to create a new file system? Yes. And you can go ahead and say done. And now we can actually install the system. And it'll give you a warning. It'll say, warning, data on partitions will be completely destroyed for new file systems. Do you want to continue? This is the last chance you have to turn around uh, and check that everything's right. Otherwise, it's going to wipe your entire system and install Void Linux. So I'm going to say yes. And now it's going to actually install the operating system. This, depending on how old or new your computer is, this might take a while. For me, it should only take around uh, like a couple seconds, um, like half a minute. But if you're using older hardware, then it might take, it shouldn't take longer than 30 minutes, really. Like uh, even 30 minutes is pretty overkill, but it shouldn't take that long to install. But I'm going to wait for it to install. It, considering it's a very minimal system, it should be pretty quick. And there we go. The system has been successfully installed. And it says, do you want to reboot the system? Uh, you can do that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit no, because I'm using a virtual box. And the way it reboots is pretty weird. So I'm going to exit the installation and just type in power off to power off the system. And give it a moment. And OK. So I'm going to go ahead and boot it back up. But first, oh. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and go to settings and make sure to, if you're doing this in a virtual box, make sure to remove the live image and just keep the hard drive you installed it on. So let's go ahead and select that and let's start this up again. And press enter to boot it. Well, yeah, these don't like these pop ups, but here we go. And as you can see, it success successfully booted to Void Linux. I'm going to log in, Bryce, and type in my password. And it will give you this prompt. And yeah, that's Void Linux installed. Uh, of course, you can do more from here. For example, I'm going to go ahead and do XPPS install. -su. And this is actually the command to ins or install an update or update your system. And if I run that, it's going to say, you know, the usual pseudo message. And it has all these packages you can update and stuff like that. But yeah, that's Void Linux. Uh, you can actually see XPPS in action right here. It look it's pretty straightforward, really. Uh, not too confusing. Uh, but yeah, that's Void Linux. It's a very useful system. Uh, you can actually go a lot of ways once you actually install the system. You can keep it, if you're really insane, you can keep it as a terminal and not even install a graphical, um, whether it be a desktop environment or window manager, if you're really insane. But I install a window manager, as you can see. Uh, I could actually go to a uh, different window, actually. Um, I actually have a window manager right here. Mm, so you can do that or install a desktop environment. It's really whatever you want to choose to do. Um, that's what I love about minimal distributions like Void because you have all the freedom in the world to do whatever you want with, with your system. Like I can install, you know, a desktop environment, a window manager, just anything I want really and work with that or just keep it as a terminal like this. But yeah. 
and <laughs> it's still updating of course it's a lot of packages that has to update but yeah i'm actually gonna do control c to fix it out but you can go always from here um it's a very minimal distribution i might actually make a video on how to use some of the tools for it like xbps and run it because they're they also deserve videos in and of themselves but yeah that is installing void linux i will see you whenever